I thought that was you who was uh, who went silent. But I'll, I'll... I know it's probably like delayed slightly, but I can hear you now. It looks good though, good quality. When'd you buy okay. it? Yeah. Hey, at Costco, they're on sale. Um, oh, this is the, yeah, the Hero Eight Black, which is like, I mean, there's one here. There's one GoPro better which would be like way over my head. Even this is extremely complicated for me. What's kind of cool is <laughs> it's like a second after I do something, I see it on the screen. Mm -hmm. it, that's normal for a bunch of, uh, for that type of stuff. Yeah. So this will, um, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it for our video lecture demo. Give me a second, please. Mm -hmm. All right, I guess this will work. I can adjust it a little bit. And um, I need to, no. huh. I need to figure out what I'm, if I'm. <clears throat> All right. Hey, so you can see me fine, right? Hey, look, I'm taking a picture of the picture. All right. So I think um, you can see I've pretty much gotten everything ready, but you know what? I wonder if there's a mode where I can zoom in a little better because uh, you guys probably can't see this very well, huh? Well, I think it'll be fine. We're at that, we're at that stage where I had, uh, I'm to go ahead and look at your module and explain to you, explain to you like where we're at and what this um, demo should actually be. Um, cooking methods. So dry heat, we did, we did, um, we covered moist heat in week five and uh, we're supposed to have actually gone through moist heat. Uh, we did a video quiz any motions and the midterm. And um, week six, we'll continue with, with um, cooking methods, dry heat. And I talk about um, dry heat and I explain a little bit about it. If um, I will publish it now and you, you guys will be able to get, get on that for this week. Um, We'll start our tomato sauce. When you guys get your product tomorrow, um, I hope you'll have everything you need to make hollandaise and tomato sauce. Um, <clears throat> and a mayonnaise. So we'll be wrapping up our sauces. And um, If you guys would just say something every once in a while, so I know you you can uh, hear me. Got it. Yeah, we can hear you. All right, cool. Just say okay, good, yeah. good stuff like that. So, um, okay. So I'll give you an idea of what we're gonna do first. I want to ask you, <clears throat> moist heat. Um, you cannot brown foods utilizing moist heat. Okay. Um, dry heat, we're brown, we brown foods utilizing dry heat. <clears throat> but um, could you, could you kind of guess what a braise is? It's kind of our combination cooking method because most braises begin with searing the meat. And then they'll often 
um, in a braise, they'll often caramelize the, the aromatics and mir the mirepoix or sofrito or whatever you um, decide to utilize in your braise. They'll, they'll often cook some of the, um, some of the mirepoix and then return the brown meat to the pan and add the braising liquid. So when I think about that, I think about carnitas, which is a braise, but it doesn't start with browning of the pork. So I'm gonna go through a list of ingredients um, and then we'll go through the method of this particular braise together. So. <clears throat> okay. Okay, a liquid, thanks. Liquid, okay. This recipe, I've picked a couple recipes here. Now, any recipe that you utilize, you're gonna find something wrong with it because you, you will know, and you will know better than 90% of the people that prepare these, these foods. So what I want you to do is um, pick a recipe and find like about three or four lists of ingredients. And you can go through that list of ingredients and go, oh, this carnitas recipe is asking for water for the braising liquid. I mean, onion, an orange, lard, clove, bay leaves, sweetened condensed milk, oregano. Okay, this recipe doesn't call for lime. It doesn't call for orange juice. It doesn't call for Coke. It doesn't call for cumin. Um, I mean, if you think about it, a lot of things that a majority of this carnitas recipes call for, it doesn't have. So what I do is I'll take another couple lists of ingredients and go, oh, well, they didn't use any black pepper in this first recipe. And um, there's no chilies. Well, talking to a lot of people and they found, well, you know what? A lot of people don't use any chilies in a carnitas recipe, but a lot of people do use a jalapeno. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a jalapeno. I'm gonna use the lime juice, the orange juice, the Coke, the garlic, bay leaf, cumin, and of course, the most important, I don't know if I told you that I made it last week. Um, I used regular oregano, but what a difference. I mean, um, Mexican oregano is completely different than oregano that you would buy that just says oregano at Ralph's or Vaughn's or somewhere else like that. And uh, the reason is that oregano is an Italian spice or seasoning and it would completely ruin the dish. Um, and also I found that cumin doesn't give carnitas a really, really carnitas flavor. It actually gives it more of a chili taste to it. So we're gonna use a lot less cumin and I added a really small amount of cardamom. Excuse me, not cardamom. <laughs> cardamom is something you put in a pumpkin pie. Um, it's coriander. So mm -hmm. coriander and cumin. Chef, um, yeah. these are the ingredients you're going to be using and in giving to us uh, tomorrow? Uh, no, I just want to do a um, quick <laughs> braise demo. So you'll understand mm -hmm. how to do a braise and what a braise actually is. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> remember, most braise... Most braise, you'll start out by searing the meat in the pan. Take the meat out of the pan and add the onions, the celery, and any other um, mirepoix or sofrito or whatever, and caramelize that, and then return the meat to the pan. Add the braising liquid, whatever liquid you decide to use, and stock is always the best. And then you're going to um, bring it up to a simmer on the stove, put a lid on it, 
and put it in a slow oven. And ideally, depending on the cut of meat that you're using, if you're, you're using the worst cuts of meat, like round, bottom round, uh, shank, um, anything that's real tough, because it, those meats have the most flavor. And after they've braised low and slow, sometimes for three or four hours, it'll be super tender. As long as it never gets too hot during that braising or cooking process. So that kind of makes sense, how a braise works. So let's go ahead and just put ours together. All right, we'll start with this braising pan. And a couple of things we're doing a little differently. Um, I mean, this isn't a normal braise where you're browning the meat at all, because what people do is after the carnitas is done, um, okay, for example, they bring it to a simmer, they put it in a slow oven, they cook it for three hours, okay? When the pork is just pork tender, they take it out of the liquid and reduce the liquid further. Um, so until the liquid is reduced and then they put the pork into an oven with that liquid uncovered and let it fry in its own fat for about 20 or 30 minutes to brown it at the very end instead of browning it in the beginning. When you brown it in the beginning of a braise, that is adding more flavor to the braising liquid. And that braising liquid will always be utilized um, as the sauce for the, the braise. In this case, it isn't. Okay, so um, <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll start out with the dry rub on the on the meat itself. And so <clears throat> we said we're going with black pepper. Yes. So black pepper. The oregano. The cumin and coriander. The bay leaves. No bay leaves. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, we said, um, mm -mm. oh, onion. I wonder if that's too much onion. Maybe a little bit. One thing about these demos is I'm uh, a little wasteful. Okay, some garlic. I'm going to use pretty large pieces. I'm trying to get down a little lower. So Jonathan, did you make a turkey? Uh, no. My brother made a turkey, but my mom was already cooking like tamales for um, Thanksgiving. So it was kind of like, it was a lot of food Anissa, Anissa, did your mom make a turkey? Is your mic? Yes, we made one and we made ham too. Cool. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't we didn't make a turkey or ham, not, none of that no meat <clears throat> okay so uh, let me see let's see what we got in here so far 
the bay leaves, the garlic cloves. Oh, you know what we need? We need some lard. You know what I did is I made um, carnitas last week and I saved some of the fat off the top because lard is always good for cooking some things. <laughs> How much lard? It asks for actually a quarter cup. Does that look like a quarter cup? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, Maybe should... a little more. <laughs> okay. A lot of things I'll, I'll just uh... mm -hmm. liquefy it first. We have our lard in there. We need some jalapeno. Not too much, because most recipes don't even call for it, right? You want to put the seeds, mister? Okay. Uh, sure. uh, you yeah. need the, the seeds of the jalapeno in, the, in there? I actually seeded it. Oh. What I did was <laughs> I cut it in half, and I seeded it before. So <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to like do it so you guys don't have to. Oh, yeah. Like half hour watching. Wow, yeah, it didn't, I didn't have seeds. It didn't melt all the way. It requires more mixing, maybe. <laughs> Lard, I don't know, it seems kind of weird, but. Okay. So we have some lard in there. Um, let's think about, we have lime juice, orange juice, and Coke. Last time I used Coke that had a regular Coke. And um, in this one, I'm using Mexican Coke. So it has real cane sugar in it. So I'll use a little more than I did last time. Where'd you get it? Um, I go to Bilo, and uh, there's one at, next to Walgreens in Inglewood on um, La Brea. Mm -hmm. I think it's La Brea. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it's La Brea, um, about a quarter mile north of Manchester. OK, so we have the garlic, the jalapeno, the coke. We need some orange juice just for demo purposes. I'll do a real orange. Whenever I'm juicing, I'll hold it with a fork and I'll squeeze the orange, you know, so it doesn't get on my hand. I'll squeeze the orange and move the fork around. Oh, I just squeeze it like with my hand. <laughs> Yeah, but you end up getting orange juice on your hands. Yeah, and that's smart. Yeah, I'm using a seed, a seedless orange. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's neater. What's that? It's uh, much more neater than than the other ways. I agree. I might as well use a whole orange. I was really considering adding a little more orange juice. It's inevitable. Mm -mm. 
And there it is. The lime juice. Um, if you've ever seen, you know what a reamer is, right? When we um, isn't that the tool to use to squeeze the ju the juice out, right? Oh, is that what they call it? Well, I I don't want to start looking for it right now, and I should have actually had it prepared for you guys. But it's um, imagine if this was wood, and it had a handle on it just like this. And you can take it and um, it'll squeeze out the liquid from the oranges, lemons, and limes. Mm -hmm. They're pretty cool. Oops. Yeah, they're definitely handy. Yeah. And um, I have on my KitchenAid um, a power reamer to make juice. And um, I have a tree that produces these um, Satsuma mandarins, and I'll get like hundreds of them, and I'll make a couple of quarts of like orange juice out of these mandarins. It's pretty yummy. I think the limes are a lot harder to juice because these are actually really hard and not very juicy. Mm -hmm. I heard you can do the technique where you roll a lime before you cut it, and then that way it releases all the juices. I'll try it. Well, this one actually is off my tree. I have a really fancy lime tree. That's fresh? What's that? It's uh, fresh. Yeah, this is um, a really fancy. Oh, my God, you're right. Well, I'll try it with one of those hard little ones I got at Bilo, too. Oh yeah, the hard little ones are like, I think they use them for drinks, if I remember. Like yeah. you can just, yeah, you bite so, into them. Let me see. Hey, of you, is it just you three still? Anita, uh, Dahlia, and Jonathan? Yes. Yes. Hey, are any of you guys, oh, wait. are any of you guys old enough to drink? <laughs> uh, 18. No. no. <laughs> Uh, just kidding. I'm 23. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly, you're, you're 23? No, 18. <laughs> what I thought you said. Uh, so so yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember where it is you have to go to drink if you're 18. Isn't like, Mexico still 18? Uh, yeah, I think so. And, and maybe, maybe Hawaii. I don't know. Because um, whenever I go to parties, uh, like, they'd always offer me a drink. I'm like, I'm saying, oh, no, I'm 18. Like, oh, well, you know, it's a party. <laughs> In Mexico, you would have. <laughs> and I'm <Yeah>. like, nah. <laughs> Hey, that's, it's all fun. I tell you, though, where, where the, where the, hey, you know what the problem was is those little limes I got at Milo, they just don't have that much juice in them. Uh -uh. But maybe it's more limey flavor. I don't know. Um, yeah. What I was going to say is I taught for a long period of time, and I'm actually a licensed or registered proctor to teach responsible alcohol service. Oh. And one thing a lot of people know, or restaurant owners, and it's the most important thing you need to know, it's, it's equally as important as food safety, is that you're legally and uh, criminally liable for over serving someone or serving someone to the point of intoxication. And none of my students understood or believed the fact that you can't go to a bar and drink to the point of intoxication. And um, there's a little chart that tells you how many drinks you can have before you're legally. Does anyone know the actual, um, they call it blood alcohol content. Or uh, it's is it 0 0.08, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what they said is that's like one, that's like eight drops in 1,000. And so your blood is like 
if you knew exactly how many pints of blood you had, eight drops in a thousand. Anyway, for the average weight person, it's only like three drinks. And then you can't drink because the drinks go away at the rate of one drink per hour. Um, isn't it dependent on like how much alcohol they put in? Like some bars, they serve like um, drinks that have just a little bit of alcohol in it. And then they let you have as much as you want. No. <clears throat> well, I can tell you one drink is equivalent to uh, five ounces of wine, 12 ounces of beer, um, an ounce and a half of um, 80 proof or one ounce of 100 proof liquor. So you have to say, oh, you know what? I just had a Long Island iced tea and it had like an ounce of this, an ounce of that and an ounce of that. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it adds up to like three drinks for one cocktail. But um, yeah, there's like a, there's like a new wine, I guess, Stella. I know, I know some of you have heard of it, but uh, Stella Black, I tasted it and it was like, oh my God, this is like, it's like fruity, you know, it's, it's definitely a children's drink. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, oh my God, this is like, should be illegal. It's, uh, it's like a children's drink. Well, oh my God. Um, let's just go through and make sure we haven't forgot anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I didn't put in there is salt. Uh, you always salt at the end, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, normally we would, huh? All right. Mm -hmm. You notice I've kind of measured everything real carefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little more of that maybe <laughs> no hey um remember it's a lot different when you're cooking for yourself than when you're in a restaurant and you have um what they call standardized recipes that are made that you cannot deviate from at all um it's an enormous difference so cooking for yourself is definitely um, more interesting because every time you prepare the same thing, you might vary this and that as far as ingredients. Um, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat my oven while I bring the pot up to a simmer. Uh oh, you know that pot won't fit in there, huh? Yeah, well, okay. So yeah, let's preheat this pot, stick it in the oven, and then do something that's actually on your syllabi. I know you guys are anxious to make hollandaise sauce. And I think hollandaise, is, hollandaise and mayonnaise are a couple of the hardest of the mother sauces. The emul emulsified sauces are actually the hardest to make. Um, and still, even after I've made them hundreds of times, on occasion, it'll break. And it's funny, you need to watch a few YouTube videos <laughs> before your um, attempt, even your first time. I, I should have had a couple stoves out already. <laughs> No biggie, that was quick. All right, so you can see, you don't really need um, the liquid to cover the product. You don't need that much liquid in there to cover the product. Um, remember, more liquid is gonna come out of the meat. And um, the most important thing is, this is gonna braise for about three hours. With a lid on it, that liquid will reduce still, but it's not gonna be, when we say reduce to a sec, that means it's gone completely, the liquid, it's dried up. It won't be, it won't disappear completely. Okay, so I'm just gonna tidy up a teeny bit. 
while we wait for that to get to get hot and get ready for your um pondy. chef yes what are you making again uh, this is carnitas and oh, our, okay. our next demo should be the hollandaise because you guys have to prepare the hollandaise and you'll be given the ingredients for it tomorrow um no one yet has um jonathan has uploaded his um, knife skills video he's the first one to successfully upload it but it was too large of a file to get into the canvas um yeah yeah, yeah. Um, check your email because i think i sent it to your email right now to studio well, that's great that hey i accept it and then you'll get you'll get your 100 percent or 100 points whatever it was worth um, I, I don't know if you went through or not but you okay. could, you could my knives are too blunt uh chef <laughs> i cried um the onions made me cry so bad <laughs> okay hey, remember our knife skills or knife <laughs> sharpening demo um you need to seriously think about getting a stone and there's mm -hmm. another thing another thing i can share with you um did you know uh let me uh get rid of something here all right did you know the bottom of every coffee cup huh um listen you, yeah. you see the bottom of a coffee cup right mm -hmm. when they fire this in a kiln it's sitting like this so the very bottom of a coffee cup doesn't have glaze on this part right here. Yeah. So you can literally use that as a stone. Oh. You know, the bottom of a coffee mug. <laughs> now, no. I, the reason I don't suggest doing this is, is it's rather dangerous. Mm -hmm. You don't have control like if you were using a regular stone. But yeah, it's true. The bottom of a, a mug mm. you can use can to sharpen. Be used? What's that? Oh, it can. I need to test that out. <laughs> um, it, you can sharpen knives with it. You have to be patient and be very careful because it's extremely dangerous. Uh, what dangers can come from it? Can the cup break? No, but you okay. can cut yourself. Oh, you yeah. cut. That's really the only danger there are is you know when you're using a knife the possibility of cutting yourself mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay i'll test um, that out before sir yeah give that a try because mm -hmm. okay, my brother talking? oops sorry no go ahead your brother what On, um because my brother he bought the knives uh they were just like a knife set that um was like good enough we'd say but um, they were very, very blunt and we couldn't find our old knife sharpener. It was like the little stick thing. And he's, yeah, so, and the stone, the stone, it it seemed like it cost too much. Like the ones I wanted, the ones I looked for. Yeah, hey, um, it's funny how one place can charge you um, 30 or $40 for a stone. And you can find the same stone for like, you know, $10. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is they do make some really cheap stones that you can find at a restaurant supply um, for under ten dollars. But they're they can actually damage your chef knife if you're not careful. And um, so it it might it depends on how great your chef knives are in that case, right? Mm hmm. Okay, it's because so, I have to do online shopping. That's why I can't um, drive to a, a restaurant supply. Yes, uh, I mm -hmm. understand. So, hey, you know what? Stick to Amazon or where you can return it guaranteed. I mean, you're, you know, something like that, that if, if it's not what you want, you should not have to keep it. You know, that's the bottom line right there. Okay, I'll check so out the mug thing, though, yeah. Yeah, you gotta try it. Hey, um, <laughs> it doesn't cost anything to try, and uh, I'm just saying that just be be very weary. Mm -hmm. Things like that can be dangerous. So I'm just getting things out of the way. Um, 
to do our, our demo here. And um, I put a sauce hollandaise recipe um, video for you to watch. I'll, I'm gonna publish um, today's uh, content right now. And um, I want you to compare that video to our um, lecture demo for the hollandaise. And this is something that you don't even see on theirs, okay? On ours, we actually have um, vinegar, shallots, and peppercorns and water. Um, in a skillet. So a small saute pan, right? And what you do is you reduce this, these first four ingredients, you reduce it down to like, just like a couple of teaspoons of liquid. And then you add another ounce of water to that to like deglaze that pan. And you pour that into the bowl that you're gonna beat the egg yolk in with, right? And you put that over what's called a double boiler. So we're gonna begin by creating a double boiler. Uh, I want to find something, a, a, larger, a larger pan. And you guys know what a double boiler is? Yes. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. Oh, all right. I have the stove and I'm gonna add some water. Normally I wouldn't use bottled water. <laughs> <laughs> but no. uh, hey, you guys are special. <laughs> this is the best quality of a uh, double boiler you're ever gonna see. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, so again, we need a small skillet. You can see I could have been, um, oh, you know what, this is a really small skillet. It can sometimes get dust in these pans because they, they may not use it for a long period of time. Okay. Oh, do you put the skillet on top of the, the thing? Uh, no, you actually use a stainless steel bowl to beat the egg yolk on top of the hot water. Ooh. Now, see if that egg yolk gets too hot. Um, what am I looking for? Oh, another stove. A bowl. I'll, I'll show you in a second here. I like these stoves. Oh, this one's still kind of dirty, sorry. Um, I should clean these. But um, these were like $25 at Big Five. And I saw a sale, half price. So I bought five of them. <laughs> and uh, I tell you, they none of them have broken since I bought them like about 15 years ago. It's pretty uh, cool. What about the cans? These cans, um, Otago, um, Iwatani, you can buy a case of these Ooh. for less than the dollar a can. Otherwise, you can pay somewhere, you can pay like three or four dollars for one can. So again, it's, it's shopping is just, it's all about shopping, you know, finding what you want at the right prices. With a reputable supplier <laughs> sorry uh, that's it from reputable suppliers but so you're past that point in food safety and sanitation you could tell me what really um, what constitutes a reputable supplier mm -hmm. and go go ahead uh, it was wasn't it a like reviews like basically um history with them and there are other and other people who recommend them um not really um it sounded like you used the f word there 
No, hey, Sorry, I want, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wanted to tell you the actual, um, the bottom line is that they're in compliance with law, the law. Oh, that's, oh yeah. number, that's number one, is they're in compliance with the law. Okay, I thought it was so, also recommendations. Yeah, um, mm. by like other maybe reputable companies or something is a possibility. Okay, so <clears throat> here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through the list of ingredients, and um, we have some, okay, white wine vinegar, okay, a little bit of white wine vinegar, uh, okay, uh, we have some cracked black peppercorns, we have some shallots, right? Yes. So I'm really seasoning that vinegar, that white wine vinegar with shallots and peppercorn. And um, I imagine um, the salt and lemon juice will be added later, a little cayenne pepper. And do you know what we're going to actually the fat we're using in this, if we were making mayonnaise, we can use regular vegetable oil, but the fat in this is really gonna be a clarified butter. So it's very important that we, um, I'm gonna add a teeny bit of water to that. Mm. <laughs> Okay, that'll give me a moment to grab the strainer I'd like to use. And the right size bowl. The right size bowl depends on the size of the pan that you use for a double boiler. So remember, if the bowl sits in here, this is hot. But you know, the liquid is only 200 degrees. So the air above the liquid, it's only about 175, 180. From that little bit of steam coming up, okay? If it was hotter, it would, um, it would not work. Okay, so we've reduced that to about a teaspoon. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strain this because I don't want peppercorns in my hollandaise sauce. <laughs> that, that would be- uh, They're a, hard to, um, they're like chewy, very hard, yeah. yeah. A chewy hollandaise would be not <laughs> what people will. Your restaurant would not be too busy. Okay, so you can see we only have about, I'm gonna say about, a teaspoon or two. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is actually add a teeny bit more water. So I'm going to use three egg yolks. All right. Um, a pinch of salt. This actually asks for, um, well, a considerable amount of salt, but um, Hey, did you guys see the salt? Uh, you put it, it was in that large cup, no, on the table. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you uh, got it, yeah, you're right. Wow, pretty <laughs> good. But hey, let's use this pink salt. Why do we use pink salt? Because it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty. All right. Isn't it from, um, where, where do you get pink salt? I forgot where. Um, oh, this one says Himal Himalaya. Him yeah, there. Himalaya. It's pretty neat. But you know what I just found? Um, this was actually given to me by Chef Bob. He's actually the um, patissier chef at Trade Tech, and he has two. Um, he has two published cookbooks, and this is a sea salt of Hawaiian. Um, Jade green 
bamboo sea salt. Wow. But um, <laughs> I have all kinds of salts and um, how fun. So I'm gonna use a balloon whip. Now, you know what's cool about a balloon whip is, I, I know you can't see that. You see it's vibrates. Oh. That really I helps. Mm -hmm. That really helps getting, I'm just hitting it against my fist, right? Mm -hmm. But it I can really hear it. Vibrates. Yeah, and um, it helps us aerate, aerate the uh, yolk. While I'm, while I'm doing this, I want to be ready. Okay, you can see there's already some bubbles forming in there. When this gets um, when this gets thick, so thick that you can, when you go across, you can see the bottom of the pan. It's a streak stays across the bottom of the pan. That's how thick you want these. I feel like it's too high for me. I mean, this is like right next to my face. And uh, I think if my arm was lower, I would have a little more energy to beat this. And they do say to wipe the sides down a couple times. When you know it. Wipe the sides? Yeah. Uh, this, that always happens. <laughs> a rubber spatula isn't available when I need one. Whoa. That was a mistake. To take, to take that moment at that, at that moment was not a good time to, uh, to start beating it. They say the sides because See, because there's just a trace of it around the mm -hmm. edge, that will actually cook. But I can see this, this to me looks like the consistency I want. It doesn't look real light and fluffy. But that's okay. feel like I wish I had used a smaller bowl. This is our clarified butter. And one thing about this is I might want to, all right, melt it. But um, it's not melted anymore. It started to, I think this will work. It just looks thick and it doesn't look light and fluffy. Like, um, Sometimes it does. Okay. Is it ever okay to use like a powered mixer for hollandaise or is it just something you need to mix up? Now, you know what? Um, <clears throat> they do say that um, you can make instant hollandaise and there's like hundreds of recipes how to, how to do it. And it's a lot easier, but you have to learn just for yourself, the classic, the, the real classic method of preparing it. So the most important step is the drizzle. And they say that <clears throat> an egg yolk is the stabilizer. Egg, egg, and, egg yolk and acid. So the protein and acid will stabilize the fat in a, in a permanent emulsion. Um, they say that hollandaise has to be held um, at about 90, 90, or 90 degrees or 100 degrees for service. So at this point, what you do is you drizzle the clarified butter into it. And you would alternate with a little bit of water or lemon juice. 
Mm. My lemon juice. Oh, what I had decided to do. Because it gets it gets too thick. So I'll constantly be thinning it a little bit. And I'll get my water. And then keep drizzling the that clarified butter into it. And I start to tell you that one egg yolk can, can hold in an emulsion about three ounces of fat. You put in three egg yolks, I think, from the beginning. It was three egg yolks? Yeah, I used three egg yolks, and I should be able to put like about a, almost all the butter? A whole cup of clarified butter in here. What happens if you um, add too much or add or not add enough? If you add too much or too fast, it could break. And almost and everyone would say, oh, you know what? You can just um, add a little cold water and, and beat it, and it'll come back into, it'll form an emulsion again. But I tell you, um, I don't like to change that because it's not always true. You can't always bring back an emulsion. Chef? Yeah. What kind of dishes would you recommend to use the holiday? What time we what type of what? Dishes would you put the hollandaise on? Hollandaise is extremely good on asparagus. It's it's extremely good on um, um, a sunny side up egg with ham. That's called um, eggs benedict. A slice of ham, um, an egg over easy, and hollandaise sauce on it. It's so good. Okay, so what we do to finish this hollandaise is we add um, a pinch of cayenne, which I have right here. Chef, can we use it for a fish? Yes, it's very good on fish also. And um, at this point, I would season it with the salt. What do you think of the consistency? It looks like a, like, yeah, it looks um, runny to me. It's not really runny, a little bit, mm. but you don't want it solid. And if, if I hadn't added that little bit of water and lemon juice, it would be like mayonnaise, a little more solid. But you can see, you see how it, it remains in like, um, peaks. Mm. It actually remains in peaks. So you know it's not broken. And this is the point you would taste it and adjust the seasoning. I could beat a little more clarified butter into it. consistency I would like. It kind of thinned out a little bit when I add that. And I think it has to be kept warm. 
Remember, it has to be held at 100 degrees. This might be too warm. I'll just take it off the fire. A little bit of steam will keep this warm. It's like okay, how they make chocolate. What's that? It's like kind how they of. melt chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, the double boiler process. Mm-hmm. Ooh. It came out nice. Yeah, you know it needs a little more lemon. And that's about it. And again. Hmm. Jeff, what do they use the um like when they shave the lemon? What do they use that for exactly? Zest. Act, the yeah. zest of the lemon actually has it has a, a citrus flavor, a little more citrusy than lemon juice. So it has a little different flavor than lemon juice. But when you're making anything like a cheesecake or anything that you want a lemon flavor, the addition of zest makes it more lemony because lemon will just make it more and more the more lemon you add the more sour it'll get also <laughs> but remember with the addition of the zest it'll be even more lemon flavor i see can you put it on hollandaise sauce or is it not preferred put what on hollandaise um, can you zest it or is it not yeah, okay to zest? A lot of people use zest in a hollandaise hmm. for a more lemony flavor. Okay. Um, now, remember our first step? Here's another sauce for you guys to learn. Remember our first step where we reduced the white wine vinegar? Mm -hmm. in the skillet with the peppercorns and shallots if we yes. add if you add tarragon to that reduction you're making what's called bernays bernays sauce is the same as hollandaise but without the addition of the um um actually with the addition of tarragon i don't know so now you know one more of the um sauces and um, oh, hmm. 